Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Central Point, Virginia, the summer of 1958. Mildred Jeter, a woman of both African American and Native American ancestry, discovers she is pregnant. And Richard Loving, a Caucasian, is the father. The two decide to get married, and they live happily ever after. The end. Except wait, nope. In the state of Virginia, interracial marriages are illegal. So Jeter and Loving go up to Washington, D.C., where interracial marriages are legal, tie the knot on June 2nd, 1958, and return home to live with each other back in Virginia. Well, somehow word must have got out about the couple, because shortly thereafter, the local sheriff ordered a late-night raid of their home. So yeah, in the middle of the night, police not only burst into their home, but also into their bedroom, hoping to catch them having sex, which also was illegal. The Lovings were actually sleeping and awoke to being arrested for violating Virginia's Racial Integrity Act, the law that said whites and non-whites could not marry each other. The Lovings pled guilty, and the judge sentenced them to one year in prison. However, their sentence was suspended as long as they moved out of Virginia and did not return as a married couple for 25 years. So the Lovings moved up to the same city where they got married. Washington, D.C. The Lovings did occasionally sneak back down to Virginia, but for five years they lived in D.C. and basically hated it. As Mildred and Richard's family grew in D.C., they missed their family back home and probably the clean country air. In 1964, tired of living as an exile, Mildred wrote Attorney General Robert Kennedy. Kennedy referred her letter to the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, who then reached out to the Lovings. The ACLU's two volunteer cooperating attorneys, Bernie Cohen and Philip Hirschkopf, filed a motion on behalf of the Lovings to the Virginia Caroline County Circuit Court, requesting it to allow the marriage since denying it broke the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. The County Circuit Court didn't respond, so Cohen and Hirschkopf sued the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia. After no luck there, the ACLU helped the Lovings appeal to the Virginia Supreme Supreme Court. While the Virginia Supreme Court also upheld the constitutionality of the interracial marriage ban, it did get rid of the sentence banning the Lovings from the state of Virginia. It's important to note that during all of this, Mildred and Richard Loving got a lot of national media attention. They absolutely were not looking for all of this attention, but it obviously did help raise awareness of their struggle, especially after Life magazine came out and took pictures of them. Anyway, the ACLU pretty much expected all the pushback from the state of Virginia, so they were well prepared to appeal to the Supreme Court. The Lovings, who were done being in the spotlight, decided to stay home on April 10th, 1967, when the court heard oral arguments. By that time, nine years had passed since they got married. On June 12th, 1967, the court announced it had unanimously sided with the Lovings, overturning their convictions and ruling Virginia's interracial marriage ban as unconstitutional. Chief Justice Earl Warren wrote the opinion, which stated that Virginia's Racial Integrity Act went against both the Due Process Clause and Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Said Warren, quote, The 14th Amendment requires that the freedom of choice to marry not be restricted by invidious racial discrimination. Under our Constitution, the freedom to marry or not marry a person of another race resides with the individual and cannot be infringed by the state, unquote. The court also argued that any laws banning interracial marriage were straight up racist, with the purpose to keep white supremacy going. Despite the court's unanimous opinion in Loving v. Virginia, interracial marriage bans remained on the books in several states, though authorities couldn't enforce them now. The last state to get them off the books was Alabama in 2000. After Loving v. Virginia, the number of interracial marriages steadily increased across the United States. In 1967, 3% of new marriages in the country were interracial. By 2015, it was up to 17%. Loving v. Virginia also paved the way for the legality of same-sex marriage several decades later. By the way, yes, I do have a video about Obergefell v. Hodges. Check it out, maybe. In 2016, the film Loving dramatized this court case. And my friend, 
then Cypher reviewed the historical accuracy of the film over on his channel, The Cynical Historian. You should definitely check that one out. And be sure to subscribe while you're over there. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. Man, there were a lot of unanimous Supreme Court decisions in the 1950s and 1960s. This is one of them. I wish they happened more often, frankly. Thank you to Cypher from The Cynical Historian for collaborating with me on Loving v. Virginia. He made a video about the film Loving, in which he analyzes how historically accurate the film is. Cypher has a whole series dedicated to doing this. Uh, it's called Based on a True Story, and you should just binge watch the whole thing right now. I am going to take the week off for the holidays, so happy holidays. I'll see you in two weeks.